I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Erin Moriarty, who co-stars as Starlight in Amazon's blockbuster superhero action satire, The Boys. Erin, a lot of Starlight's arc over season two dealt with her quest to expose the truth about Vought and Compound V. Um, were you happy with the way her storyline panned out over the season? Mm. Yeah, I was really happy because, you know, in some ways, um, firstly, I was really happy to kind of that we as the audience and I myself as playing her, that we got to witness her adaptability to her environment. And, you know, I think at the end of season one, I think that she's kind of called to really make a decision. You know, she's had her heart shattered by the person she's fallen in love with and by her mother and all of the things that she had formerly based her life on in terms of values um, have really come into question. And so I think that when you're faced with that, you're either, there are two roads you can take. You can become defeated by that or you can have it sort of light a fire behind your ass, so to speak. And I think it motivates her. I think that she adapts. I think she ultimately decides that what she's been through and her adversities are going to make her a stronger person. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to, I think that one priority for myself and for Eric Kripke is that in spite of her being a superhero, she's always at the end of the day, dealing with either very human issues or issues that draw parallels to, you know, our real human world. And so she adapts, but she doesn't necessarily do so perfectly. You know, I think that you see her trust issues manifest throughout the season and her resistance to her mom and her resistance to Huey. So it's not like she adapts and bounces back straight off the gate. I think it's just, she is adapting while also working through the damage, the, the, the damage that sees the end of season one brought to her psyche and her heart. And towards the end of season two, you see her sort of coming back to herself. So she adapts, but it's not, you know, without struggle. And I think that was important to depict as well. So overall it felt just fun to play because it was quite nuanced. It had more shades of dark for her character than we've seen before and um yeah I'm very excited to see what's in store for her next oh mate aren't we all um no. you, there's so much to unpack mm -hmm. from season two and you were, had such a central role in fact mm -hmm. what I what occurred to me towards the end was for a show called The Boys mm -hmm. the women had a really really central role on season two I think you drove the narrative Starlight, um, Aya Cash uh, as Stormfront, we had Maeve, Kamiko, um, Ashley, mm -hmm. Becca, some really strong and fascinating female characters. Did you really appreciate that as you were shooting season two, that how important the women on this show are? Yeah, of course. For me, it was kind of a non-negotiable going into this job that, you know, one of the reasons why I was attracted to it in the first place is that you meet Starlight and you kind of want to put her in a box and you want to pigeonhole her and you assume she's going to be that naive ingenue and she's not. And so immediately the way that our showrunner, Eric Kripke, um, approached the female centric storylines and also the way he approached me after I booked the job and just wanting female empowerment to be a priority for him made me feel really comfortable with getting involved in the superhero world, which I think, only recently has started to create female centric storylines at all. Um, and so season two showed not just my character, but all of the female characters really step up. And you, you even see someone like Homelander kind of feel threatened and dethroned by Stormfront. Yeah. You know, you kind of have Homelander who's the, 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 the villain of the series be dethroned by a female. So I think it's cool to see strength manifest positively and negatively on the show. Um, you see someone like Aya Cash playing sort play Stormfront and she's so badass. And then, you know, you see Karen Fukuhara who plays Kimiko and shows that she's got heart and strength and yeah, I mean, especially that scene in the finale, you know, which is a spoiler alert, but you just see that, you know, throughout the season, there's this, there's this um, phrase going around, girls get it done, and it's, and it's coined yeah. by Vought, and so there's an irony to it, because Vought just objectifies their women, 
but then you see the you know then you see a true um, manifestation of that statement in the final episode i think it's great i think it's super important and i think that we really need to be mindful of it moving forward um if you've got a show called The Boys and the primary perspectives are male perspectives, which they are in the comic book and in some of our show, I think that our showrunner needs to become, I think we all need to become increasingly conscious of making sure that at the end of the day, the perspectives on our show are not just male. And I think we did that this season. And I think we have the opportunity to even expand the female perspective on our show. So I loved being a part of that in season two, and I hope that it just gets more expansive. Yeah, I, I love it how it, it starts off so ironically with the girls get it done. Mm -hmm. And then by the end, we've got Peach's boys want to be her playing on the soundtrack yeah. as the women are beating Stormfront up. It was a great throughput okay. for the season, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. And that song, I didn't know they were going to use that song. And so when I saw the finale for the first time, which was a few months before it came out, and I, this, as soon as that song kicked in, when we started to beat up Stormfront, it just was so, it's the only scene that I watched more than once because I don't love to watch myself. And so I'll do it once out of like, I want to see the work that we've all done, especially because now some of my closest friends are in the cast. I want to see the work yeah. they've done. But beyond that, I don't want to watch it very much. But that was the one scene I returned to just because it was so cathartic and satisfying. And I just, I loved it. It was really yeah. fun. I love it yeah. too. I love yeah. how the boys um, depicts a world in which the superheroes are revered, like gods. Um, but, and they're, but they're, they're, they're not good people, uh, or so many of them aren't. It says a lot about celebrity and commodity and the cult of personality, materialism, fame, greed. But how did that all resonate with you when you took on the role? Yeah, I mean, look, you can't you can't live in, in in Los Angeles or work in this industry without being exposed to, you know, some of the fuel behind the stigma around this industry. You just can't. Um, there's a reason why there are stereotypes. There's a reason why there's a stigma. Um, I think that the benefit of being of working on a show like this is that naturally the people who are going to be attracted to a show that's such a satire of any industry that's superficial, that can be superficial like ours, is that it's gonna draw people who are down with the satire and therefore maybe more down to earth, you know what I mean? But I thought, thought it was really refreshing. I mean, I am definitely one to, as an audience member when it comes to shows and movies, I'm one to gravitate towards um, any type of satire or show or movie that 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 isn't afraid to approach taboo subjects and I do think that exposing certain facets of our of our industry um, through a digestible format like a superhero show is a really good way to kind of deliver it to people because you know I have read things like Ronan Farrow's Catch and Kill which is all about Harvey Weinstein and covering up but 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 I think that a lot of people who watch our show might not watch a book that's written by a journalist who's trying to tear down an industry that covered up for Harvey Weinstein. I think people who watch our show kind of want to watch a superhero show and then they end up being spoon fed um, topical issues and topical parallels. And so it's, I like kind of being in the pop culture digestible format of serving up those those issues and storylines of those issues but you know like I I just find it refreshing to work in that environment where we're not afraid to talk about it because I you know Harvey Weinstein has been convicted but we still work in I still live in an industry and work in an industry where a majority of the people were complicit and so the work is never done and so yeah. I just feel appreciative that I even got hired to be a part of a job that involves higher ups that are not afraid to tackle those issues because we're never going to progress if we don't address them. And frankly, we're not done yet. We have a lot of work to do. So, yeah. so it's fun. It's good. It's refreshing. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, cause we all frankly do feed off celebrity culture in one way or another through our work and through mm -hmm. the, our social medias or whatever, mm -hmm. but this show has some great examples of just skewering it that grotesqueness of like the junkets where you're being asked stupid questions or the celebrity red carpets. Did you really appreciate you and the cast appreciate having a real fun crack at mm -hmm. grotesque celebrity culture? 
Yeah, I mean, it's really it's really satisfying. It, it's also kind of a litmus test to the actors that you work with if they're able to really kind of properly make fun of it. Because, like for example, I did that whole press junket. I did all of those scenes with Aya Cash, who's the most down to earth. You know, lives in New York City, allergic to that kind of um, vapid celebrity culture. And so the entire time, I think that it was just frankly very satisfying for us to acknowledge the beast that is the industry we work in and for once instead of having to put up with it being able to make fun of it it was just really refreshing do you know what i mean i'm so yeah because it's it comes with the territory of our work and so we just feed the beast we you have to you know what i mean and so to have this moment where we're able to acknowledge how vapid and kind of insane it all is, yeah. is just very, is just a moment where we're like, okay, we're not just crazy. There are people who get that this can be batshit at times, that this can be utterly vapid and superficial. And it can also be the opposite. It can be amazing, but it's like, you know, you've got to poke fun at those things occasionally. Um, and I just, I don't know in the whole world of the entertainment industry, there are so many moments where I'm like, I just wish we wouldn't take things so seriously. So yeah. I just personally felt very, um, it was very satisfying and for myself and my fellow cast members, which says a lot about them and the type of cast we have and the type of boss we have that everyone would be so game and gung ho about addressing that whole side of our industry yeah here's another really this is a more difficult topic to mm -hmm. kind of to, to get right because when you talk about violence we always want to talk about nuance and sensitivity and restraint mm -hmm. but this show is not that this show is um skewering satire mm -hmm. satirizing making fun of and the violence on it is so hyper realistic and ridiculous there's a lot of exploding mm -hmm. heads what are mm -hmm. your thoughts on what this show says about violence on tv Mm, interesting. So I think, um, you know, I kind of think that as far as our show goes and as far as the violence goes, and, and I am the type of person who has been going to see Tarantino movies since I was too young. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I, I know that there are certain people who are going to wince and they're going to grimace at the amount of blood that's in our show. I do think that when, when, you know, at times we do have to acknowledge that at the end of the show, that at the end of the day, the show is very much a dark comedy and it's kind of our brand and we're gonna really go there. Like if superheroes yeah. did really exist, this is the amount of blood that would be shed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if superheroes were just free roaming the world and people could explode heads and people could do all of the crazy stuff that we, that we, hypothesized when we do superhero movies, I don't think the world would be as neat as it is in some of the superhero worlds that we show. And so A, I kind of do think there's actually ironically this realistic side to it, which is like, no, we're doing a superhero show and we're doing a superhero show that begs the question, if superheroes existed, would they really be good? And the answer is power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so when you have people going around with who are just high on power and ego and they have the ability to just demolish anyone in their way, there's gonna be a lot of blood. And I think that we just kind of made the commitment to not half-ass it. And I think that that combined with just, you know, uh, 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 like, going for that sort of Tarantino level of bloodshed is just kind of that sort of saturated world that we wanted to make. Um, and yeah. so I think that there was just like a mutual commitment to really when it comes to the humor of it, the darkness of it, the satire of it, and even the blood of it, of just not halfing, half assing it. And really honoring, like if there were people just flying around the world who could laser people, there'd be way more bloodshed, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, I don't. I think The Boys, there's no show that does power or, or, or mm -hmm. talks about power better than The Boys because, because it, it's true about the corruption of power. And what I was thinking about, and you probably get this a lot, what kind of feedback do you get about how there's been a lot of parallels with the last few years in American politics with what mm -hmm. The Boys was trying to or attempting yeah. to kind of portray, what do you think? Yeah. 
I find it really interesting because I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, I have gotten a lot of feedback about, uh, you know, people, uh, what it really reflects to me, frankly, I, I love the way that we depict power on our show because we depict it in a pretty much negative light. And we, 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 we say explicitly and implicitly that, that mm. it can be such a corruptive thing. But what's, what I found interesting is that I thought we would make this show and it would be really obvious. It would be really obvious what we were criticizing, what we are criticizing, what we are um, you know, condemning and not condemning. But what it's really shown me is that people really see what they wanna see. So, you know, I've gotten a lot of um, responses and, and fat, emphatic praise for our show by people who maybe favor a side of politics that I think our show directly criticizes or, you know, people who wow. have expressed praise who have expressed support of our show who are very, very religious. And we have an entire episode that um, kind of satirizes um, uh, dogmatic religion. And so I think that's really interesting. And I'm not, I, I'm really glad that we're attracting a broader audience that I would have anticipated. But what it's really shown me is that I made assumptions about our audience when in reality, you know, I think the show has enough going on in terms of what you want to see and what you don't have to see so we might be making all of these subliminal messages or these parallels but if you're just coming in to watch a superhero show it's kind of all that you'll see i guess and people wow. really just take what they want to see so that's been really fascinating to me because in my mind we hit people over the head in terms of where we stand politically you know in terms of religion and you'd think so but actually I've been very surprised by the outpouring of support and love that we've gotten from people who are on a side of the political spectrum that I wouldn't have expected. And so, and I'm not, I'm totally down with that because I don't ever want to be so tribalist that I don't, that I yeah. reject the support from those people. But really my takeaway has been that you know, A, I'm very pleased with the overwhelming support and praise we've gotten. And B, people really take what they want to take from a show and see what they want to see, which has been yeah. interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It never really mm. occurred to me. Um, yeah. So there's one final question. It's in episode seven in particular for you. I forget sometimes how physical your role is and can be. And when Black Noir, played by Nathan Mitchell, basically beats the shit out of Annie and destroys yeah. the set, I was just yeah. wondering if you could briefly talk us through how challenging the physicality of those scenes are to shoot. Yeah, I mean, the scenes where I'm beating people up. So for example, there's a scene in season one where I'm beating a couple guys up. There's a scene, you know, the finale of season two where yeah. I beat Stormfront up. Those are more fun and easier than actually get, getting beaten up. The physicality that's involved in a scene like the one with Black Noir, where he's throwing me down around like a rag doll, yeah. it's really difficult. You know, it really gives you respect for stunt people who are able to fall and feign injury with grace and protect themselves because it's such a skill. And I'm going to be honest, like I had always... Um, just from a, a more of a psychological approach, had always found exercise to be a non-negotiable in yeah. my life. And then I had done pretty, pretty intense physical training for a couple of roles prior to this one. And I went into it with, um, and what I've observed in myself is that you cannot these these scenes are not for the faint of heart and we there are a couple of actors on our show who train with a trainer throughout the season and I just um it, exercise is, is a priority like I said for the mental aspect but also I have no choice but to be a certain level of fitness for this role because even in the scenes where I'm getting beaten up there's a level of strength that's required in the way that I hold myself as a superhero, but also in terms of like catching myself and crawling across the ground and just, you need there, you need to have, um, it, 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 you wouldn't think so, but you need to have like, even to play a superhero, you need to have good posture. You need to be able to, you know, keep up with the stunt people and train with them and do boxing. And so 
it's really, it's difficult. Um, and I would say that it definitely entails a level of physical preparation for the role and a physical upkeep throughout the season, because mm. otherwise, you know, you just, you can't, you can't embody a superhero, even when you're getting beaten up by Black Noir. And that scene was really hard. And all I have to say is I'm very grateful for my stunt woman, Anita, and, um, it, you know, I, it's really hard. It's very hard to make it through a scene like that without going home with several bruises, which I did. And it's kind of goes hand in hand with the superhero genre and the horror genre. I've just learned that you're not going to make it out of either of those genres without getting some bruises and some abrasions. And it just comes with the territory of those genres. Yeah, it's just the battle scars that you have to wear to play these Truly. really interesting roles. Honestly. Um, Erin, thanks so much for your time today. Great season. It was really fun to get through and I'm looking yeah. forward to season three. Thank you so much. It was lovely to meet you and thank you for the awesome questions. 